Hello guys, good day to you. Welcome to this new video. This is AOC Day 3. I'm going to comment a little bit my code and how I did solve it with GD Script. Now, these apps are quite disorganized and like you can imagine, they have rock sacks. The rock sacks have two compartments and the apps put their items inside those two compartments. And we need to find if there are items that are in both compartments. And each inventory is represented by a string and each letter is an item in this string and compartments basically have half of this string and we need to find which items compare in both compartments. Now the fact is this, these letters have some priority and basically if there are non-capital letters, basically uh, their priority goes from 1 to 26 and if there are uh, capital letters, they go from 27 to 52. So with that said, we need to find what is the sum of the priorities of these items that uh, compares in both compartments basically. Now what I did is I, I load the rough data, I created a script for this uh, just to load and I, I don't want to code it every, every day so basically I just use that the script and I have the alphabet with n the non-capital letters in the beginning and it's going to give us an, an index from 1 to 26 and we have the capital letters uh, following the, the non-capital letters and that index goes from 27 to 52 and that's fine. We have a variable that is a sum and we have another variable that is called group but this is for the second part actually. Now what I found out is actually that you can access to a string uh, like it was an array basically and you can use an index like this. I didn't know about this, I learned it while doing this AOC and like you can see if I access to the alphabet letter 25 is going to give me, uh, let's see what it's going to give me, it's going to give me a Z because Arise starts from zero indexed. Now, like you can see, the first thing that I do is row data equals to row data uh, dot split, and we split the data. And what it does actually is uh, giving us some strings that are basically uh, formatted in an array. Then I set the alphabet equals to this function here, create line array, and I pass the alphabet itself like a parameter. If I go here, create line array, it just has, it has a variable inside, it's an array, an empty one, and, a, and I start the for loop according to the line length, basically. And for each line, I append my line getting basically a substring of just one letter from the line, basically. And then I return my array. And this basically splits all the alphabet here in a in an array and in, in, in nested arrays for each letter basically. What I do then is check occurrences basically. Now checking occurrences is this little function here, and I start basically a uh, for loop and according to the to the row data, and then I call split line passing i basically. Here, what is going to happen is that I have two variables, line A and line B, and line A is going to be half of the inventory, is going to be basically compartment one, and line B is going to be the, uh, is going to be the rest of the line, basically, like you can see like that. And then I, I do the same thing that I did for the alphabet. I create a rise in a set of rise with each letter of this line. And I do the same for line B as well. Then what happens is that I have this other variable that is called current occurrences. And I call this other, <laughs> and I call this other function that is called compare. Now compare is another fu function that I created. I pass two arguments, line one and line two. I have a variable here that is called my array and it's empty like always. And I start a new for loop um, in line in line one. And if line two has i, basically, I'm going to append i because that means that uh, both letters are in the same. Uh, in both compartments and I return this array and this way we have all the occurrences and the next thing that I do is actually to, to find the index of this letter that is appended to the uh, first uh, index 
array basically of the occurrences and I add that index to the sum plus one because uh, array starts from zero and this is part one and the part two is actually to create groups of triplets and now I'm going to show you in part two basically we need to uh, create a group of triplets and we need to compare these triplets if they have the same item and then we do the same sum according to the priority and that happens this way basically we go here and I create groups of array and that what and what is going to do that is basically I have a variable that is called index that is zero and then I have a variable that is called my array and it's empty basically we do the same approach we're going to append stuff to my array and I run a for loop here uh, in row data size and this for loop is going to run uh, on the size of the row data divided by three so basically if we have a row data that is one uh, 300 is going to be just 100 and then inside the for loop I run another for loop and this one is going to be um, for loop B in range 3 now range 3 goes from 0 to 2 and that's great because that way we can actually get the triplets now how do I do that now here I append to my this variable my array basically I append data given by the i of the first loop that if it is zero, zero that if it is zero basically it's going to be index zero and everything starts on index zero so i plus index zero plus b that again it's index zero again basically we're going to grab the data zero we're going to grab the index zero data from the row data then what we do this for loop goes on and we're going to have b that equals to one and we're going to grab uh, row data indexed one and we're going to grab uh, row data index two as well and we append my array basically to grouped and then i reset my array to empty now you may be tempted to use clear or arrays that doesn't work because somehow there's something wrong with the RAM uh, memory um, address, something like that. Who knows how RAM works? Basically, they kind of explained me, but I didn't understand that much how why uh, this was happening. Basically, and if you do that, basically every result that you're going to have is going kind of to be empty. And then I add to index plus two. So that runs again and we're done basically we have triplets and so we grouped everything in triplets now what I do basically then I call this other function here I was real lazy at the time and I call this function just lazy here basically in the lazy function what I do is actually have a variable that is called occurrences now I run a for loop and this is basically based on the group dot size in, uh, in grouped, basically, we have a rise um, that has three values. And what we do to each occurrence variable, we're going to compare i, basically. In the compare triplet, we pass i, basically. And compare triplets is another function. Um, and here I have just three lines, three variables, and I have line A, line B, and line C. And basically, um, here I learned something new as well because I didn't know that you can uh, get inside nested arise by writing it like this I normally did a few more passages to do that but like you can see basically I I just get the index of the uh, grouped array and then inside the grouped array inside the that array there I just get uh, the values from the wanted index and then basically I create line array like for the alphabet what I do is basically run a for loop inside line a and if line b has i and line c has i and if all those uh, conditions are satisfied basically I'm going to append i and then I return my array that bounces basically here on the lazy function 
where I go and I sum the index of the letter that we got from the comparison here of, of the triplets and I add one and so I have the sum as well. Okay, this was day three. It was kind of hard because I, I, I learned new stuff. It's very interesting to explore more in depth uh, each day what you can do with GDScript. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know down in the comment section what do you think about this explanation. How are you challenging yourself with AOC? Are you doing well? Is it hard for you or is this a piece of cake? All this stuff. I'm quite in interested in and learn new stuff and, and watching how people find these kind of challenges. Uh, I'm Andrew from Hat Games. Thank you for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the bell notification to not lose any of my future videos. And more important, keep devin' games!